Okay, <clears throat> good afternoon everyone. Um, so I'm Brian, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna be speaking today about the Comprehensive Antibiotic Resistance Database and um, our associated ontology and um, uh, software that we use and have developed. So for uh, those in the room who might be unaware, uh, antimicrobial resistance, <clears throat> pardon me, is a, uh, is a ongoing global health crisis. And in order to combat this crisis, we need uh, global collaborations, especially in the past decade, we've seen the emergence of a lot of multi and totally drug resistant pathogens. And this has prompted a response uh, to analyze both the human and economic impact of resistance. Um, and there's actually a little bit of worse news, which is that it appears that COVID has actually uh, set us back a bit on our progress because of uh, poor antimicrobial stewardship, overloaded hospitals, all those kind of usual things that happened during COVID. Um, so that's all the bad news. <clears throat> the, um, the bulk of this talk is gonna be focused on this database, um, which we call CARD for short. Um, and so it's primarily a knowledge base on the molecular and genetic basis for antimicrobial resistance. Um, it is, the database is actually integrated directly with our ontology, which is the Antibiotic Resistance Ontology, or ARO, which is uh, in the o, uh, Obo Foundry. Um, and of course it's curator reviewed and it undergoes periodic uh, public release and has various quality checks. Um, and so as of this month, um, it has just under 7,000 ontology terms, and these are accompanied and annotated by uh, over 5,000 reference sequences and sourced from 3,000 publications. So throughout this talk, I'm gonna talk about the different aspects of CARD. So I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the antibiotic resistance ontology, the AMR detection models that we actually use uh, in software to, uh, to detect these things, um, our, a little bit about our curation practices, our software, the resistance gene identifier that actually does the, the uh, is the workhorse for, this, for the prediction, and uh, this ongoing project, Power Resistomes and Variants, which uh, I'll come back to in a bit. So I thought I would just show like kind of a reductive version of uh, like a subset of the ontology. So basically this is what the ontology looks like for um, the metallobeta-lactamases, which are a type of antibiotic resistance gene. Um, and so this is a little bit, you know, reductive, but all I wanted to show was that um, CARD is split up into seven core branches, uh, or seven branches, four of which we kind of consider core, and the three that are in dotted outlines are a little bit secondary, but the four key branches are the AMR determinants, so you can think of these as the genes themselves, the mechanisms, so the biochemical mechanisms of action, and of course the antibiotic molecules and their targets, uh, and of course this is all connected in the usual uh, ontological way using semantic relationships. The other thing that CARD does is it um, attaches these, uh, it, 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 sorry, it annotates um, the actual AMR determinants with um, additional information that we retrieve from publications and from, um, and from sequencing databases like GenBank. So when a novel um, beta-lactamase is described, in this case I've just shown an NDM beta-lactamase, which is a type of metallo beta-lactamase, um, we can go back to our reference databases, which are usually GenBank and PubMed, although they don't actually have to be, and we create this AMR detection model. And so this is a uh, model that our software then uses down the line, but it includes the DNA sequence um, and the protein sequence, as well as by other parameters, these are typically going to be um, resistance-associated mutations. So some, some genes require a particular mutation for resistance, the resistance mechanism to actually kick in. And then we also have this bit score cutoff. Um, so this is a little bit, um, <laughs> this is a little bit, I think, strange and unique to CARD, but essentially what the bit score cutoff is doing is that when our software um, attempts to detect resistance from a user-submitted isolate, the bit score cutoff essentially tells CARD um, how strict it has to be about what it considers that gene. So we don't actually need to have identical genes, like 100% 100 identity to a canonical resistance gene. We can be a little bit off, and how off we are depends on the, the gene itself, and so it's unique to that model. <clears throat> so for curation, our golden rule has always been that um, to be included in CARD as an AMR determinant, you have to appear in a peer-reviewed scientific publication, you have to have your sequence publicly available, 
and you actually have to have uh, clear experimental evidence of uh, an elevated minimum inhibitory concentration over, over your controls. Um, so that all needs to be provided in the, in the publication. Uh, where do we get these curation topics? So, you know, like when, how do we find, um, how do we find these novel resistance genes as they get published? Honestly, these days, a lot of our curation prompts kind of come from community feedback. So we rely a lot on our users to um, either email us or post on our GitHub to let us know like where we've missed things and where things need to be corrected. I always kind of tell people that while Card is an expert in this ontological space with regards to antibiotic resistance, none of the people really who work on Card are experts on a particular subset of resistance. So we rely on people who are experts in beta lactamases or other particular uh, AMR gene families to give us to give us that feedback and let us know where we've potentially missed things. Um, sometimes we also do these targeted literature reviews, so these might be ongoing projects. For example, if we're approached by somebody who wants to do a deep dive on a particular pathogen like Shigella or uh, Enterococcus, we'll, we'll do a deep dive into the literature and review our database and make sure that we're up to date before we proceed with that. Uh, most of our new month-to-month -month curation is actually assisted by uh, a software that we developed that a master student in our lab developed. Um, this CardShark software, which is currently on version three. Um, I would have loved to talk a little bit more about this, um, but it's probably more appropriate for the people upstairs. Um, but essentially it's a text mining, machine learning uh, algorithm that uh, ranks literature for us and kind of guides curators like where should you look first. It, so it reviews all the literature and says, this is most likely to be relevant to CARD. Uh, and I just included the citation because um, it actually appeared online just this week. Um, so if anybody is interested, I encourage you to go check that out. <clears throat> so this is our software that we actually use, um, the Resistance Gene Identifier, or RGI, uh, which is the, the brainchild of uh, this man who's our lead developer, Amos Repena. Um, so I mentioned earlier about those detection models. The RGI is essentially a way for users to submit their own isolates and RGI will tell them what resistance genes are present in their isolate and then annotate that using the information in the ontology and in the database. Uh, and so that's available online, but it's also available through a command line distribution. And so I'm just gonna walk through an example that we use pretty often, this plasmid that was sequenced uh, in this paper from Laura Villa et al. in 2012, so it's a little bit old now but it has multiple uh, resistance genes present in a single plasmid, and so it's, it's useful for our illustrative purposes. So I've just gone ahead and grabbed the accession from NCBI, and I've put it into our web, uh, into our web interface. And so when you do that and you run this through RGI, RGI will print a tabular list of the results indicating what resistance genes were found. And I've highlighted this one at the bottom because you'll see that it indicates that it has a strict criteria so this goes back to our idea of a bit score cutoff. When we say a perfect, we're talking about something that is 100% identical to a canonical resistance gene. And when we say strict, it's something that's not 100% identical, but is above that bit score cutoff that we've manually curated. And so it's basically something that's worth taking a look at in, in more detail. Uh, it also produces visuals. So these are annotated essentially by the um, antibiotic resistance ontology. So here, this is just a gene. Oh, I have a laser pointer. So these are just a gene. Uh, this is a gene by gene view. So you can see the perfect hits and the strict hits. But with the ontology and our annotations on the ontology, you can also break this down instead by AMR gene family, which looks pretty similar, except you can see that this strict hit belongs to multiple gene families, uh, because in this case, it actually confers resistance to multiple drug classes. And then you can also view that by drug class. And so now you see that these perfect hits um, Multiple hits can actually be binned together, so both this OXA1 and NDM1 beta lactamase, uh, both are types of carbapenemases, so they get binned together in the, in the drug class view, and it breaks it down for each drug class that's associated with this sample. So then the next thing that we started trying to do, and this is basically when I came along, uh, goodness, like seven years ago now, this is something that I kind of started doing, um, which was the idea of using RGI to scale up our analysis and get closer to something, instead of predicting resistance, predicting resist tomes. And so looking at an isolate or looking at a pathogen as a whole and using multiple isolates to 
uh, imagine like a species-wide resistome, and, and, but it, it is essentially uh, generated in silico. So when this started, we started with a list of, uh, I think it was 18 pathogens, um, and now we're at, in our most recent release, about 300 and, I think it's 377, I wanna say. Um, so it's grown quite a bit. For each of those pathogens, we go to RefSeq and, and the assembly databases and download basically all the publicly available isolates for all these pathogens, and we analyze them using this resistance gene identifier software. We split them up by you know, the assembly type, whether they're a plasmid or a chromosome. We've also incorporated genomic islands over time from uh, Island Viewer. Uh, and so all of these get put in our pipeline, and of course, we have a couple data integrity checks to make sure that we're getting the species we actually want to get and that we're getting the uh, complete assemblies that we're expecting. But all of these get fed into this resistance gene identifier, which generates a prediction for every single uh, isolate that it's examining. And so we end up with a list of putative resistance genes associated with an isolate, which we can then, of course, uh, analyze in whatever way we want to, to sort of get a feel of um, what genes show up, what genes are mobile, what genes show up across multiple um, pathogens of, of interest or of concern, and, um, and uh, what particular types of resistance are constantly associated within a, within a family. And so this all gets fed into our uh, database schema, so it's attached to the CARD database, and it's, again, associated directly with the ontology, so it can be annotated with the ontology, and so we call that uh, CARD resistomes and variants, um, essentially because it documents everything that we can find um, using our software. And so this is also all available online or for download. Um, to date, as I said, we've done 377 pathogens, which is about an analysis of 200,000 assemblies, uh, giving us a list of over 300,000 putative resistance-associated alleles. Again, this is a mix of perfect and strict hits, so it's not to say that everything is um, specifically implicated in resistance, but it's, it's an in silico prediction. Um, and so if you go to the website and you were to look up either uh, a pathogen like Klebsiella or uh, the accession uh, or even by gene, you would end up with a list. This is just snapshotting like essentially one isolate. So this is one isolate that we've analyzed from NCBI, where it comes from, it was a plasmid, and um, these are the associated perfect hits for resistance. These are the associated strict hits for resistance according to CARDS sequences, and this would be all the drug classes that are associated. And so Again, some of these are strict, and, and you'd have to like, actually do a, um, a phenotypic test to, to verify any of these results. But um, yeah, you can see that the list is quite long. So, uh, and that's just a single isolate. So with my last uh, minute, I kind of want to just touch on some ongoing challenges. Um, we've talked a lot recently about how to make RGI smarter about incoming data. We really want to annotate our database with a lot more descriptive terms so that RGI is more knowledgeable about what types of data are being entered. And so we know, for example, that um, RGI sometimes predicts things that aren't realistic because it is naive about the type of pathogen that's being included. And so we're trying to bolster that. And we've also talked about you know, how that would lead eventually to potential machine learning methods where um, not all resistance is genotypic, something like a biofilm or a membrane, like innate membrane permeability influences resistance and isn't predictable strictly by a genotype. Um, and so that comes back to this idea of card pathogens, which is essentially we get asked all the time, how do I look up everything related to a particular pathogen in card? And it's not trivial because card is gene oriented, and so we've talked a lot about how to switch that and be pathogen oriented and basically combine what's in canonical CARD with the information in CARD resistomes. And the last thing I want to mention is this nomenclature project that we've just started. So this is actually a first for us. We're going to start uh, driving some consensus on these aminoglycoside modifying enzymes, which I won't get into, but have a uh, history of poor nomenclature. And um, I just wanted to mention this specifically because this is our main collaborator, Emily Bordalo, who is down here in the audience um, today. And so if anybody has any insight into this, I definitely encourage you to seek one of us out because this is a project that we're just starting and uh, would love to chat more about.
So with that, I'd like to give my acknowledgments and thank everybody in my lab and um, all our funding agencies and support. So thank you. Okay, so open for questions. Um, I'm here. This is this is a, a great talk. So I have a question. Um, do you have a tool that uh, users can use? So let's say there's outbreak, and uh, assemblies. Okay, they sequenced the genome, and the assembly is there. So can they use a tool at your resource to see if or what? types of resi antibiotic resistance mutations are in that particular genome, or is the tools are all internal at this point? Uh, no, they're not all internal. Um, <clears throat> so you can use RGI for that. You could download it, and uh, if you have your own isolates that have been taken from patients, and, um, and yeah, you can absolutely do uh, analysis on that. We even have a, um, we have a slightly modified version of RGI that we call RGI BWT which is a little bit more optimized for like metagenomic samples because we find that uh, when we use native RGI without BWT, it, it has a bit of a hard time with metagenomic samples. Um, and so we combine it essentially with the data in card resistomes to get more, uh, to get more sequences and get stronger association. But uh, yeah, RGI is um, available for anyone or any academic use or, or whatever, research-based use. Um, and uh, yeah, if you're interested, I definitely encourage you to check it out. So thank you for the nice talk, and I really like the work. Unfortunately, I, some parts of it are really nicely licensed with CC0, but other parts make it very difficult for people to reuse. Could you consider licensing more of your work in a very permissive license? Yeah, so it's definitely something we do get feedback about, and maybe I'm not the most equipped person to talk about it because, of course, I do have like, you know, I'm, I'm not the owner of Card or, or, or whatever, but um, basically like the ARO is of course publicly available as an ontology that's in Oboe Foundry. The RGI is uh, available for any academic or government use uh, to the best of my knowledge. Um, but we do have, I mean, you're correct that when it comes to um, like working with industry partners who want to use RGI, we do have some, some license uh, guidelines there. Um, I know that that's a little bit controversial in this community, but um, essentially we use any license fees to put back into the lab, hire more people, hire more staff, and um, yeah, that's how we kind of you know, have kept it going. Um, and especially like as, as CARD grows, we need better um, like more expertise, because really when CART started, it was uh, essentially started by a group of undergrads and grad students, and so over time, it's really needed a bit more of a professional touch, I suppose. Um, so yeah. Okay. Any more question? No. Thanks, everyone. Thank you very much, Brian.